The mob doesn't make this guy a criminal. This guy was a criminal before that. This guy just wanted to be part of that life. But if he was never part of that life, he'd still be a criminal. A lot of people think that, you know, guys go into the mob and they become criminals. No, they were criminals before or at least they had the intent to become a criminal, and now they got an organization behind it. You gotta understand that the mob itself doesn't always corrupt the people that are in it. People that go in it have that tendency to be corrupt or already were corrupt when they get in it. Understand that. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is very good, very blessed on this end. As always, I give God all the praise, honor, and glory for that. Before we get into today's subject, which is mob related, so all of you that love the mob stories, stay tuned. Just have to mention a couple of things. I'll be at the Robbins Theater, September 9th. That's in Warren, Ohio. Ray Boom Boom Mancini, a good friend. He's having a big fundraiser. And I'll be appearing that night, telling you a bunch of stories, doing a VIP, meet and greet, signing books, pictures, the whole bit. So September 9th. Also, September 23rd, I'm going to be at the Caesars World in Atlantic City. That's me appearing that night. Can't wait. Going to be telling a lot of stories about the Jersey mob and a few other things. Same thing, VIP signing picture taking, you know, the whole bit. So we're going to be there. We're going to have a great time. We always do. And then September 28th is the big one. Beacon Theater in New York. Myself, Mike Tyson, Chaz Palminteri, three New York guys, two from Brooklyn, one from the Bronx will be on stage. We got a great show that we're bringing. You're going to love this. And tickets go on sale, I believe the 18th of this month. So get your tickets. It's going to go fast. Guaranteed. So those are the three things. One other thing I want to mention. Carrie Lake. I had her on. We had a great sit down. Some people got upset. Michael, why do you give this woman a platform? Let me tell you this. The woman is a woman of substance. She ran for governor. She's been considered by one of the uh, presidential nominees uh, that are campaigning as possible vice president. She's an intelligent woman. She deserves a platform, whether you agree with her or not. Doesn't matter. And let me tell you this. Yes, I have conservative views. I tend to slant that way in a big way, no doubt about it. But I'd be happy to have Nancy Pelosi on. I'd be happy to have every woman on the view on who I don't necessarily agree with. I'd love to have a conversation with them. Hunter Biden, you're always welcome to come on this show. Anyone, you know, from uh, the left, I would give you equal time and we'd have a good debate and I'd be very respectful for you and of you, no doubt about it. If you have a platform that you've created already, I have no problem with talking to you. And if we disagree, we disagree. The problem here in America, we can't have civil disagreements anymore. Some people are so angry. Michael, how could you do that? And what's the big deal? She's a woman. She has an, a position, a point of view. Whether you agree with it or not, that's, that's another thing. Some things I've agreed with with her. Other things, I don't know. Okay, but I give her her platform because she's intelligent. She does her work. So that's it. And yes... People, I know you like the mob stuff. I have 469 videos on here so far. About 425 have been mob related. On the others, I give my perspective coming from a mob point of view. And people, we can't just hide our face or hide our heads under the carpet when we have such pressing issues that are impacting our lives. If we have a voice, we have to speak out. We have to say what we believe to be true. I will never mislead you intentionally, ever. If I make a mistake, which I'm possible, which is possible, I'm human, that might happen, but I will never intentionally dis mislead you. I'm giving you my point of view and I'm giving you my opinion as I see it. I call it as I see it. So that's it. That's what this is all about. But to most of you out there, thank you so much, you know, for your support and for the wonderful comments I'm getting. And if we can have a civil dialogue on this channel, I'm all for it. So today it will be a, uh, a mob related story. You know, every once in a while, I start to look up some things and see if there's any stories that are interesting out there. Because guys and ladies, I've told you so much already. I'm not going to make 
things up. I'm not going to tell you mob stories just for the sake of mob stories. I like to have some kind of connection to them in some way or some knowledge of them in some way, give you my perspective, and that's how I deal with it. But I was, uh, I, I ran across a story about a guy by the name of Mikey Souza. The interesting about this thing, he was a Colombo guy, and uh, my father had a relationship with him. How do I know? My dad and I spoke about him, and this is going back to, I think, 2009, 2010, and a uh, very interesting conversation we had, and then I come across this article about him, and you're going to appreciate it. Hope you get a little laugh out of it, because it's funny, but hey, he's a Colombo guy. I'm going to tell you the story. My dad's involved a little bit, so here it goes. And the title of this is, uh, Mikey Souza, the Don of Screw-Ups, is now begging for witness protection. The Colombo crime family must really be going to the dogs if this is the type of muscle they're recruiting. Well, I hate to hear that, going to the dogs, if this is the type of muscle they're recruiting. And again, this goes back to 2008, 2009. Meet Michael Mickey Souza. Before legendary Colombo underboss, John Sonny Franzese, Prick sues his finger with a sterile diabetic, diabetic needle in 2005. I have to stop here, okay? When I got made, there was no sterile diabetic needle. There was a knife and a little pin prick, and uh, I don't know if all of a sudden, this was before COVID, they started using uh, sterile needles. I never heard that. I don't think that was true. I think this guy made it up. It's usually just a pin prick, and they do have a knife there, kind of, you know, just for the image of the knife being done, because that's how it used to be done. But this was allegedly a sterile diabetic needle, and uh, my dad allegedly made him in 2005. I can't verify that. That's what the article says. Tuza, uh, Souza had built quite the fiasco-filled resume. There was the time he shot himself, Plaxico Burris style, while tucking a handgun in his sweatpants. Got a handgun, he's putting it in his sweatpants, and allegedly he shot himself. I don't know where. Doesn't tell you where, but I hope it wasn't in one spot that is irreparable damage, you know what I'm talking about. And there's also his arrest for boating while drunk. And then there was the time he injured one of his fellow goons while the two busted up a funeral parlor. So, so far, we have him tucking a gun in his sweatpants and shooting himself. We don't know where, but use your imagination. If an organization is no better than its worst guy, then the Columbos are indeed in trouble. And what thanks do they get for taking this money mopey mobster? He's now turned stool pigeon. Okay, he became an informant. Souza, 42, made his debut on the witness stand last week at the racketeering trial of Genovese gangster Anthony Antico in Brooklyn Federal Court. So he's a Colombo guy testifying against a Genovese guy, Anthony Antico, in Brooklyn Federal Court. He was facing 30 years to life for drug trafficking when he sought a cooperation agreement with the feds. Now, again, I, I've been hit up on this so many times, I, 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 and I can't say it enough. There's no reason for me to lie about this. Makes no sense. I'm telling you the way it was. During my time in the Colombo family and across all five families, we were told straight out, if we dealt with drugs, we died. I never said that nobody in that life or anybody in that life never dealt with drugs. Obviously, Vito Genovese went to jail for drugs. Guys were doing it on the side. Were we anything like the cartels? No. Were we anything like the mafia in Sicily that were big heroin dealers? No. We didn't do that in, the, in New York and really across the country during my time. And my time was from the 70s right through the mid 80s. If it changed after that, I don't know. I'm just telling you during my time. So this guy allegedly was a drug dealer, but this happened in 2005 after I was gone. He was facing 30 years to life for drug trafficking when he sought a cooperation agreement with the feds. Now, how did he do that? Hello, John. He wrote to John Beretta, the chief of the Brooklyn U.S. Attorney's Organized Crime Section in 2008, offering to help seal up some federal cases. So he was facing time. He decides he don't want to go to jail like a lot of cooperators do, not all, but a lot. And uh, he writes a letter to the prosecutor, the U.S. Attorney, assistant U.S. Attorney. He says, I want to help you put some people in jail. And for that, Obviously, he wants some help with his sentence. P.S. I'm so ready to go to the witness protection program, I can't do this anymore, Sousa concluded. Now, let me tell you something with this guy. The mob doesn't make this guy a criminal. This guy was a criminal before that. This guy just wanted to be part of that life. But if he was never part of that life, he'd still be a criminal. A lot of people think that, you know, guys go into the mob and they become criminals. No, they were criminals before or at least they had the intent to become a criminal, and now they got an organization behind it. It's just like we talk about Roy DeMeo. The mob did not make Roy DeMeo a serial killer. Roy DeMeo would have been a serial killer whether he was in the mob or not. You gotta understand that. The mob itself 
doesn't always corrupt the people that are in it. People that go in it have that tendency to be corrupt or already were corrupt when they get in it. Understand that. An important distinction, I think. His testimony and dramatic turn against the bosses speaks to the Colombo's disarray and lowering, lowering standards uh, for supposed men of honor. You know, look, I know we get knocked about that all the time. You know, we're supposedly men of honor. Listen, people, I don't care what walk of life you're in. Don't let me start with the comparisons to the government right now. There's so much corruption going on in our government. So naturally, if you're on the street, you're going to expect that things are corrupt. I mean, they're criminals. We were criminals. I was a criminal. We're breaking the law. Is everybody always honorable to one another? Of course not. Is everybody in government always honorable to, uh, to one another? Of course not. Michael, that's not a fair comparison. Yes, it is. Remember, guys on the street, okay, they, t t they do take an oath to one another to respect one another. Do they always keep it? Of course not. We know that. The people in government, they take an oath. Do they always abide by their oath to protect and serve and be, and be uh, you know, respectful to one another? Of course not. Organizations, they cause this. It happens on Wall Street. It happens in major corporations. It happens in the unions. It happens anywhere. Remember, this is a fallen world. Nobody is perfect. No organization is perfect. Not even the church at times is perfect. That's the world we live in. Understand that. The Colombo's roster is getting pretty thin, conceded a law enforcement official. Again, this was back in 2009, 2010. I don't think it's gotten much better. Sousa's troubles go way back. He was dishonorably discharged from high school because I baseball batted somebody on school property, he testified. I mean, this guy's really a winner. He instead graduated to loan sharking, drug dealing, and running Staten Island gym called Evolution, where wise guys and wannabes pumped iron. Okay, so what? And after assaulting his own wife, he was marked for death by his mobbed up father-in-law. But maybe worst of all was violating a previously unknown rule by exposing himself in a Staten Island bar owned by a gangster. You know the rules, you don't take out your private parts in a wise guy's place, Sousa said on the stand in describing his past with the mob. Let me tell you something. If my father made this guy, and I don't know that he did, did they check him out at all? This guy was not qualified even to be in the mob. If he did things like this, if he beat up his wife, if he exposed himself in a, in a certain place, if he's baseball batting people uh, when he's in high school, these are not the qualifications to become a made member of the mob. Trust me, they don't ask you if you did something like that. As a matter of fact, during my day, that would have been frowned upon, at least in the Colombo family, and I'm sure in some of the other families. So I don't understand, I don't know what my father was thinking, if for any reason he, I don't know who proposed him. I don't know if my dad proposed him or who proposed him, but normally they check somebody out. This guy was not qualified even to be in the mob. And uh, if my dad was here, we would have a discussion about it for sure. In Susan's bizarro world, Sit-downs to settle beefs are now called stand-ups. You talk on the corner. And he paid the medical bills for a guy whose eye he popped out during a grisly fight. But Sousa said he sees mafia more clearly now. There's no honor in this life. It's all about the dollar, he said. Okay, here's a guy talking about honor, okay? I, I love when these guys are bad guys to begin with, right? And then they get into the life, and they're saying that the life is a bad life. How much worse can you get? Honestly, who is he to complain about that life? This is a bad guy in every sense of the word. I mean, you're beating up your wife. You're exposing yourself. You're baseball batting people. You know, you're shooting yourself, uh, you know, uh, with your own gun. You're doing all of these kind of things, and you want to call that life a bad life? Come on. You know, and, and that's a disagreement I have w with a number of guys. Listen, I'm the first one to admit the life is a bad life, but I say it for a different reason. I say it because I don't know any family of any member of the life that isn't totally destroyed. It's not conducive to a good family life. The wife, the children, they suffer. But when we get into that life, we know what we're getting into. We're street guys. We understand it. And if you don't want any part of it anymore, okay, that's fine. You do what you have to do. But to complain about the life... I mean, come on. You know what you're getting involved in. You don't come into the life overnight. You know, with me, I grew up with my dad. I understood what the life was about. I was a recruit for two and a half years. I observed, I watched, I took orders, I did what I was told. So I understood what the life was about. I saw that there was treachery. I saw that there was backstabbing, okay? I saw that everyone wasn't on the up and up. We understood that. So to walk away and then start saying, well, it's a bad life. It's not what I thought it would be. 
It's not right, you know? And when I walked away, I didn't take that attitude. I said, you know what? It's not for me anymore. This life is in trouble. It's over. I wasn't mad at anybody. You know, it wasn't that kind of a thing. And that's the only thing that, you know, I have a little bit of an issue with. But I want to make it very clear. I'm not in somebody else's shoes. Whoever walked away from that life and did whatever they did, they had their reasons. And I'm not here to pass judgment on anybody. Uh, and that's not my position. And that's not what I'm going to do. But somebody like this, okay, when it's out there and he's admitting to all of it on the witness stand, I mean, he's saying he did all of these things. I mean, come on, he shouldn't have been part of the life. And uh, if my dad proposed him, I'm a little surprised. And if he didn't really check him out or if the Columbos didn't check him out, because you know the system, they put your name on a piece of paper when you're proposed and you're ready to be made and they send it around to all five families. And if anybody has an objection to you being made, they have a reason, they're supposed to stand up and tell, you know, the reason why. Well, that didn't happen here. And I don't know what they did. Maybe they just uh, circumvented the rules. I don't know. But that shouldn't have been done. Anyway, uh, crazy story. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, you know, some of the downfall of that life, too, I think, is that maybe we, we didn't check people out strongly enough. You could say that about me. You know, maybe I should have, they should have looked in a little further into me and said, hey, you know what? Who knows if this guy's going to last in his life, if this is really for him. You know, he was a legitimate kid. He was going to school. He was a doctor. He got into the life to help his father out. Maybe they shouldn't have put me in. I don't know. Even though when I was there, I did okay. You know, I did pretty good for everybody. And uh, but who knows, you know? Listen, when you're involved in a criminal organization like that and you know that you're a target and law enforcement is on you all the time, you gotta be really choosy about who you get involved with. And look, it's the same in everyday life. It's the message that I give out to young kids all the time. Remember, you are who you hang with in this life. You are who you are accountable to in this life. Very important. So, you know, hopefully they tighten the standards if this life is going to continue to go on. I don't hear much about it anymore, and I'm really not into it. Uh, when I hear something that's uh, interesting, I'll relate it to you and give you my perspective. So that's it on this guy, Mickey Souza. I don't know if he's out now. I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, that's it for today. So how do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless each and every one of you. And yes, I'll see you next time. Stay tuned.